Welcome to the Good Fight Radio Show, a program dedicated to bringing you vital and uncompromised truths that you won't hear in the mainstream media, discussing contemporary issues in light of the Bible and how these issues relate to family, culture, and the church. The heart of this show is to glorify Jesus Christ and expose the works of darkness as He is commanded in Ephesians 5.11. Now here's your host, Good Fight Ministries' own Chad Davidson. Welcome back to the Good Fight Radio Show. I'm your host, Chad Davidson of Good Fight Ministries, and with me, as always, is the producer of the Good Fight Radio Show, Pat. Tony Palacio, how are you doing? <laughs> Tapping that mic, making sure I'm here. All right. I'm glad, <laughs> Praising the Lord. <laughs> I'm glad you're here, bro. I'm glad you're here. Praise the Lord. We're coming up on New Year's, and so this this next couple episodes are going to be really, really cool because what we want to do is, and Tony and I were going back and forth on whether or not do two episodes on this, one episode, or just something to talk about, that we wanted to go through some of our top messages that we have given and that you guys have chosen to share a lot. And this is the reason why when we go through these rankings, they're literally the diagnostics. They're the numbers on the top 10 episodes of the Good Fight Radio Show for 2020. So we're going to go through them. And I thought it'd be kind of cool rather than just revisiting the theology of it, but also give you the background of why we were working on these episodes. Maybe, you know, Tony's background uh, in terms of, okay, cool, I'm excited to go through this because of this reason or whatever it is. And we're just going to have a good time going through these different episodes. And hopefully what this will turn into is a chance for you to go back and listen to these episodes because they're the number one episodes for Good Fight radio show for 2020 because they were good and you guys liked them. So uh, we praise God for that. And uh, I think I think there's somewhat of a theme here as you go, as we go through this list I think there's somewhat of a theme on these episodes and why you guys like them. And we have our own theories of why that is, but uh, I think the theme, maybe you guys will pick it out and I won't tell you what I think that theme is until the very end after we get to number one. But we're going to start with number 10. Number 10, the number 10 episode for the Good Fight Radio Show for the entirety of 2020 is the episode Not appointed to wrath. Now, this is an episode that one of the reasons I I know for me, and if you guys want to know a little bit, have a little bit of an in during this time for the new year, this entire year, you guys get to understand how the episodes are put together typically for Good Fight is my, uh, sorry about that. My computer just went off. (laughs) Um, if you want to know how the episodes, how we come to conclusion about what we're going to teach on, a lot of times I do try to do it things that are coming up in the news and so forth, but there are also those argumentations that come forth all the time. Now, we have done a number of series through, um, you know, end times theology, a number of series. We have a video left behind the letter stray examining the origins of the pre, the origins of the pre-trib rapture doctrine. And so when we go through those things, when we go through these doctrines, people have argumentation of why they believe in stuff like the pre-trib rapture. And this episode is specifically on that. But a little more background, like I said, when we do episodes, how this typically goes is on Monday of every week, I try to put to four episodes together for the team. Now, we record usually on Thursdays. So what happens is I send on Monday or Tuesday the four episodes that I said, hey, let's do this this week. So, and then it changes over the course of the next three days. That's exactly right. <laughs> so, over the course of time, typically Joe gets excited about one of those four topics and he's like, let's do two on them. And I go, Usually part ones and part twos don't do good. Let's separate it by a week. And then he goes, let's do three of them. (laughs) No, but uh, he gets excited about these subjects and he recognizes, as a lot of people have pointed out, we talk really fast. And we talk really fast because- We only have 30 minutes. We have 30 (laughs) minutes and with intros and outros and thanking our Patreons and and everything. And thank you, by the way, to our Patreons. (laughs) That's a perfect time to do it. Patreon.com slash good fight. And one thing too, just- See, this is the sidetracking that takes place. This is because Joe's not here. Right. You know, I'm blaming Joe. But one thing that happens 
um, at the end of the year, you guys, a ton of people just bless the ministry a ton at the end of the year. And you guys have been so awesome, especially with everything going on with Joe that you guys are still, Hey, I still want to support what's going on. It's been an absolute blessing. I know for both of yeah, us. Amen. Um, so that's how this goes. Now I can give you a little bit of an insight personally, how this episode came about. It's one of the number one things that people use as an argument is, but we're not appointed to wrath. Oh, 100%. Of course we agree with that. Uh, but there's a lot more context to that. Yeah. So that, that's, I remember that's how this episode came about because we started getting bombarded with emails and comments about, but we're not appointed to wrath. So we figured we better address this. So we have an episode to talk about this and have it in our uh, arsenal of shows. So if, when people start bringing that up again, hey, go listen to our show. By the way, that was on March 19th that this show came out, if you want to go look it up. Oh, perfect. Yeah, that's awesome. I did not know that. <laughs> so it's good for you guys to have that and be able to look that up. And um, I know for me, I was working on, and you guys know that I run a discipleship group, and I know we'll have to pick up the pace on the rest of these episodes, but we had to, we had to lay the foundation here so you guys understand. I, I, was, I have a discipleship group that I've been doing now for almost two years, I believe, um, at least a year and a half. Of, of teaching scripture. I know we spent six months, I believe, just on soteriology, and then we started going through eschatology. And so one of the things that I like is to be able to review Joe's notes as well as my own before I get into any teaching. So typically what I would do was piggyback on the episodes that we recorded because they don't air typically, especially the uh, eschatology ones usually on Thursday. My my class that I teach is on Mondays. I usually like to have as much information as possible, and I like to have it fresh. So a lot of times when I pick those episodes for eschatology, it's because in the following week, I will also be teaching on that. And then the guys can go back to this after that, the following Thursday after I teach. So it's really nice to kind of hammer things home. And as Tony said, this is probably, it's it, top three. Top three for sure. Top yeah. three in terms of argumentation for the pre-trib rapture. And so I, I think it's an awesome episode. I encourage you guys to check it out. If I gave everything away in terms of what is said. I think I wouldn't do it justice and we wouldn't get to the rest of the episodes we are going to talk about. But there'll be other episodes similar to that just in the top six right here that we're going to go through concerning the end times and the and end times theology and rapture theology. And one of the things that I want to encourage you to check out if you haven't just checked out, if you don't just check out this, also check out, we have an entire debate that Joe did that we all traveled oh, yeah to Colorado. And is it six parts, five parts? How many parts is that, Tony? Um, I think it's seven or eight. Oh, it's, look at that. Yeah. It's, think, it's, yeah. there's a, let's just say there's a lot of parts uh, yeah. to it. And I would encourage you guys to check that out. We, we have that free of charge. In fact, prophecy, prophecy in the news, the conference that it was at when Pastor Joe debated Dr. Doug Stoffer, they, they were selling that DVD and they said, we can't give it to you until, you know, we make some profit back from it. So we waited months and months and months and months and months yep. <laughs> until finally getting it. And we said, bam, free release. We're going to get this out to as many people as possible. Yeah, it's called the Great Rapture Debate. It's on our Good Fight YouTube main YouTube channel. Yeah, the Good Fight Ministries YouTube channel, not the Good Fight Radio Show YouTube channel, which is where you're listening to this, maybe, if you're on YouTube or not, you're on Podbean or iTunes and so forth. So that is the episode, Not Appointed to Wrath. We show very clearly that we actually believe that believers are not appointed to wrath, and the Bible is very clear on that, and we still do not believe in a preacher rapture, so I encourage you to go check out the episode to see why. And probably if you listen to enough Good Fight Radio, I think the, you the probably people have an answer. In, the people in Goshen probably. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's the, when you when you look at it from that perspective, you know what happened in Goshen and the the plagues back then. I mean, God protected them; they were there. Yes, God is powerful enough to pass over oh, some yeah. and still uh, take His wrath out Amen. on others. Right? Yep, exactly. Um, he's also able we to have the blood of Jesus that were marked. So, Amen. It's on the doorpost of our hearts, hopefully, if you Amen. love and know Jesus. All right, so let's move on. We go from end times eschatology to Mormon theology, and that is the next episode that we're talking about. Episode number nine was revealing the secrets of the Mormon temple. And I will tell you this, I wanted to do a number of teachings on Mormonism, and when I sent to Joe, I said, hey, can we talk on Mormonism? You know, this is some of the stuff that's going on. This was almost somewhat of an ad-libbed episode mm -hmm. where— I know with uh, Joe, he kind of put a lot of this stuff together 
right before he got here and still was able to deliver an incredible teaching on Mormon on Mormonism, the endowment uh, that happens there when they pass away, the casket. I was actually contacted by somebody who came from a very staunch, not only Mormon, but Mes- Masonic family who, as we talked about, all of the different pictures, putting on the fig leaves and so forth, as we talked about those things, he wrote and said, hey, I went to my grandfather's funeral and that's exactly what they did. And I was like, whoa, that's so, it was cool to have that anecdotal evidence as well of somebody that, you know, had that situation. But one of the cool things is I think when you reveal some of the wickedness that is going on in cults and those things that are absolutely contrary to the word of God, quite clearly, very easily seen, I think that what happens is we we point back to the scriptures when it comes to sharing these things, sharing the wickedness, sharing the cult-like behavior, sharing those things that are so common to Gnosticism and Satanism, and you see how Satan has fooled the world. It's something that is needed to have scripture alongside of it. And, and this is where, when it comes to Good Fight Ministries, we try to point out over and over and over again when it comes to exposing these things is when you expose them, as Ephesians 5 verse 11 says, just two verses later, you expose it for what reason? To get Christ, also in the next verse, to arise in their hearts, for Christ to shine in their hearts. And and right before that, everything that is revealed, it'll be manifest. People will be able to see it. So they recognize, wait, this is wickedness because those cults hide this behavior. Those cults hide these things. In fact, typically when you're sharing the gospel of Mormons on the street, the first thing they say is they don't talk about the planet Kalab, all right, and that you could be one time be a god, even though that entices men's flesh, uh, that you can be a god if you're really, really good, because God was once a man, and as man was, you know, God, as, as man is, God was, and as God is, man can become, as the Mormon church teaches. So these things are really, really important because what? They're the first lie, right? That Satan said, you can become as gods, right? Hath God said, you can become as gods. Right and back to the garden again. Right back to the garden. And then you have him putting on the fig leaves there and, and everything. And so I think that people saw this. And uh, Second Corinthians chapter 11, 2 through 4, I think kind of uh, typifies what the message was about. And this is Paul writing to the Corinthian church, For I am jealous for you with a godly jealousy, for I betroth you to one husband, so, th- so that to Christ I might present you as a pure virgin. But I am afraid that as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, your minds will be led astray from the simplicity and purity of devotion to Christ. For if one comes and preaches another Jesus whom we have not preached, or you receive a different spirit which you have not received, or a different gospel, or another gospel, right, with which you have not accepted, you bear this beautifully." He was he he was he was bringing down condemnation for them accepting this. Hey, you've been betrothed. You've been given this signet ring. You are betrothed. You are engaged to Christ, so to speak, and yet you are going after something else, another Jesus, another testament, another gospel. Literally, the Book of Mormon. What does it say right on the front? Another testament. Another, yeah. Another gospel. That's exactly what it is. I think um, as we talk about typification and, and typifying things, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, Galatians 1, 6 through 9, these texts, I believe, memorize them in their heart and read them to Mormons when they come knocking on your door. And check out that episode. Watch, listen to, not watch. That's going to be the next surprise for uh, 2020 is that we're going to be moving on to video here. But... Um, <laughs> But the temple ceremony, uh, you guys can hear it. Oh, yeah. We have the recording of it. We have the recording of it. You guys can hear it in that episode. And then eventually we'll probably have to redo that and then do it on video so you guys can see it. Oh, yeah. Um, A lot more powerful when you see it. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And we were watching it when we were recording. So when you guys hear that emotion from us, a lot of times it's because it's raw and we're looking at it. You know, we just did an episode um, just last week um, concerning abortion and a video game that came out for abortion. Mm. And Tony and I are watching the wickedness, right? You're watching them. You, you to win the video game, you're killing off people that are trying to stop you from killing a baby and you kill all them off and finally you get to have a shotgun to kill the baby with and then you're supposed to leave it behind so other people can kill babies. That's and so the, the it's crowding. one thing to express it uh, verbally. It's another thing to see with your own eyes. Pretty, pretty crazy. So we move on to the number eight episode and... 
you uh, you might catch on on the theme here that you guys <laughs> typically really enjoy from us. And I do believe that this is a place of uh, Joe's expertise. That's why not only do, does he uh, have a debate concerning this subject, but we have a video concerning this subject. And he's now gone through the book of Revelation, almost done the second time as a church body. And so no one knows the day or the hour. And people say that no one knows the day or the hour. But post-tribs would know the day or the hour. So Joe gives an argumentation from Scripture that we will not know the day or the hour, but we do recognize the times and the seasons. I think one of the biggest misnomers when it comes to the pre-trib characterization of what post-tribs believe is that they will take text and they will just add a narrative onto what a somebody who believes in a post-trib rapture, they will add a narrative to it that is simply not true of what they actually believe. And not only that, they add this straw man and then they caric- uh, give it a caricature of what that even believes. And so it's radical. Like all of a sudden, because you're post-trib, you now are saying you know what day and what hour. And it is, it's absolutely positively ridiculous. But I do find it interesting when you do go through the famous classic rapture tests, and they should be classic rapture texts to us because they're post-tribulational, because there's not a single verse in all of the Bible that is pre-tribulational, period. Mm. Just not there. There is no pre-trib rapture. There's no rapture seven years before the return of Christ. It just doesn't happen. That would be three comings. But anyways. When you look at this one, no one knows the day of the hour. There is something that we are called to look for. We are called to look for the season. We are called to look for the signs. In fact, both in Matthew and also in um, in First Thessalonians five, there it's very it's very interesting when you look at the parallels between the two because there is something they're warning about. One time where Jesus warns about those who would get drunk with the drunkards, and then at the end. He would be cut up and thrown into pieces because he said that, hey, the king delays his coming. And in 1 Thessalonians 5, it says that we are not to be of the night. We're of the day. We're not to be overtaken like a thief. We're not. To, we're supposed to be sober because we don't want to be ashamed at his coming is the fact. And so when we look at these things, we recognize that we can see the season. We can see the times. But we cannot actually know the day or the hour. I have no problem recognizing that. But Jesus was very clear that that generation that sees those signs, that sees those signs, that he will see the end. And so we do need to recognize the times and the season, but we cannot know the exact day, the exact hour of his return. And I think that the scriptures are quite clear on that. But we need to also not be ignorant of the times and the seasons. We recognize those things because so often, and I've clicked on a number of pre-trip teachers to hear them say, there is no sign. There's not one single sign. There is nothing before the rapture. But then you have these same people spending all these times in conferences. You have these same people in all these times and all these end times conferences. And you're like, but you're, you're saying there's no sign. There's nothing. Who are you warning <laughs> like, yeah, there's all kinds of signs. I mean, you think of Matthew 24. There's, a, we know that there's going to be an Antichrist. Thessalonians talks about the Antichrist. Yeah. So there are things that lead up to knowing the basic timeline of how things are going to are going to go, but we don't know the exact day and hour of when the rapture is going to happen. So they, they kind of they they mash the two together. And, yeah. And then, like you said, they they paint a narrative of what it is we believe, which is completely wrong. Yeah, uh, m- most of the stuff that they would teach, we would actually agree with. It's just the timing of the rapture. Mm-hmm. That's it's just the timing. There's no scripture that says it happens before the seven years, and they don't have a scripture to to show that. So they have to isogete all the scriptures. And and as uh, who was it that said, "Oh, it's between these two verses in yeah. the white space." Uh, yeah, it's left behind. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is the guy from Left Behind. Yeah, no, you're exactly right. The, the space in between there. And it, and it's interesting because I can point to you a ton of post-trib rapture text. On the last day, right? Yeah. It's all on the last day. Yeah, Matthew 24, 29 through 31, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 and chapter 2, when you mm-hmm. put them together, when will the relief come? When will it come when he comes with his flaming arrows to 
dole out vengeance. And then 2 Thessalonians 2, quite clearly, not until the falling away first and the Antichrist is revealed. When you match that up with Matthew 24, or Matthew 24, 29 through 31, that clearly says after the tribulation, mm-hmm. the sun will be darkened and the moon will give light and moon will not give its light. And guess what? God will return for his elect yeah. from the four winds of the earth. <clears throat> and something that kind of ties in with the uh, not appointed to wrath. You, even the pre-tribs admit that the so-called tribulation saints mm-hmm. are protected during the tribulation. Yeah. So they're admitting that, yes, God can protect his own because we're marked by the blood of the lamb. And they admit there's nothing that's going to happen to the believers during that time. 100%. The, the tribulation saints, as they like to call them. So, okay, so if he can protect the tribulation saints so-called, then why can't he protect his entire church? Like, why does it have to be an either or? So, no, it's a, it's it's a val- it's not just valid. I think it's a great point because you show the hypocrisy of the argument mm-hmm. because you're saying that he couldn't if the, if the entire church was here, he wouldn't be able to protect them from his wrath, mm-hmm. right? He wouldn't. He, he you know God just would not be able to dole out his wrath on the unrepentant and not hit the believer, mm-hmm. right? But you do believe again, that the, Goshen, you know, yeah, back. Goshen, perfect example, yeah, and you do believe. As Tony already mentioned, you do believe that God will dole out his wrath and that the saints in the tribulation period will not receive God's wrath because no believer will receive God's wrath. Right. And so— And we you, agree on that. We uh, we 100% agree. We just agree that—we disagree because we believe the tribulation saints are just the saints. They're just us that yeah. are happen to and, be there and at all that time. And all the times, if you do a word study on the word saints in the New Testament, it's always the church. It's always the believer. Oh, you mean it's not just the Jews? <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, they, they like to do the little bait and switch there when it comes to, oh, you don't see the church after Revelation 3. They're not there. Well, yeah, they are. They're, the saints are there. They're, they're talked about all through Revelation. But for some odd reason, the word saints takes on a different meaning. It's, oh, all yeah. of a sudden it's the Jews. Well, it's n- through the entire New Testament— the saints is always the church. Yeah, and it's it's interesting when you go through those churches, you know, as as I have, you know, Ephesus and Thyatira and so forth, Sardis, Philadelphia, you know, and and you go through them, God talking specifically. And by the way, I know we got we got to pick up the pace. I just saw Tony's face. <laughs> um, but by the way, when you look at those churches specifically, that literally would have been a route that leaving Potmos that in Asia Minor, that whoever had these letters that he would have been taking them to those from John to those different churches, you literally would have been able to walk those paths and they're listed in order. Oh, yeah, they're all in yeah. close proximity to each other. 100%. Yeah. And you can see that they would walk literally in the order that they're addressed. Mm-hmm. And it's so funny that you would take this. And what kind of exegesis is it to look at those churches and to read him talking about those churches, but then saying at the end of each one, right? Anyone who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the seven churches. Okay, but you see him talking to those churches, and because he specifically addresses those churches, then when he describes what believers are over and over again, those washed by the blood of the Lamb, Mm -hmm. in the rest of the book of Revelation, you go, well, this is where the church was done with, because he specifically addressed things that were going on in those churches. Like, Mm -hmm. where where would you ever do exegesis in such a manner? Right. I, I, it's, it's so, it's so interesting, and you see it. Over and over again, one of the most dangerous texts that I I've seen hyper dispensationalists use is not understanding the di- rightly dividing the Word of God and thinking that that all of a sudden negates much of the New Testament. It's closer to Marcionism a lot of times mm. than it is to biblical Christianity. When you get to the hyper hyper dispensationalism that basically says none of these letters are even for us; they're all for the tribulation saints. This is all just for the Jews over here in the Gospels, and you pick and choose, and you just put a big blank sheet of paper over some and not realize that it's for us. It's very it's very sad. It's really heartbreaking. But <clears throat> took a lot of time on that. We took a lot of time a, on that. That's a popular subject on the show. <laughs> Amen. No, it is a popular subject, and I think it's it only grow more popular as we get more and more closer to Christ's return. Mm-hmm. And so uh, as we're moving forward, speaking of Christ's return— uh, speaking of end times theology, episode number seven, as we move along this list, and I know we will we'll, uh, have to move a little quicker than that last one. We only got a few minutes left on this episode, but we still, we look at the episode number seven, and this one was literally one that when Joe came here to the studio, 
that was when we decided to do this episode because he got here and I said, Joe, have you seen what's going on with Microsoft and Bill Gates and Marina Abramovich? And that was the episode, Bill Gates, Vaccines and the Mark of the Beast. That was May 7th, this episode. This was May 7th. So this is at the very beginning of COVID in terms of lockdowns and everything that was going on. And we have video of Bill Gates specifically talking about population control. We had video of Satanist Mar uh, Marina Abramovich teaming up with Microsoft. Very strange, strange, strange stuff <laughs> with her teaming up. Um, and in fact, we did an entire episode concerning her teaming up with them. And we talked about the Mark of the Beast because we wanted to also make sure that people understood that even though the international publication for cryptocurrency and the patent that Bill Gates did was number 10220606060606, so 202666 is literally the patent that Bill Gates and Microsoft's patent to the cryptocurrency international. Um, we not all of us, even though we pointed all of that, that out, we also wanted to show quite clearly that we didn't believe that what was going on right there was actually the mark of the beast. And also we answered the question of whether or not somebody could accidentally take the mark of the beast. And that's not the case in scripture. It's very clear that those who take the mark of the beast, they worship the beast. And it says not that they did this on accident, but they refuse to believe the truth and they are given over to a lie. And I think that episode was also brought out even more so when we did our live show for the great reset. Now, as we move along, mind you, a lot of these things that we we have other material that we worked on that, that coincides with this. And I would say one of the most interesting takes when we look at episode number six, the fact that Good Fight Ministries put out a video exposing Jeffrey Epstein long before and most mm -hmm. people knew who he was. It was a year or two before it blew up. It yeah. was, it was, and and that video did really well. Mm -hmm. And really that video was birthed out of the fact that we thought that Hillary Clinton had a very good chance of being a pre being the president of the United States. And so we were working on a video just concerning her and her witchcraft, her and her seances and talking with, de with dead people and so forth. And this one, Jeffrey Epstein, The Devil and the, and the Occult, this episode is the number six episode in 2020, where it's quite clear that Jeffrey Epstein even worshipped the god Pan. And if this you was got, from August 17th. By August 17th, perfect. And the god Pan, actually, interestingly enough, um, a lot of people believe that when you go down, we talked about this in this episode, when we were in Israel, we went to where Pan was worshipped, and it's right above that most scholars believe that Jesus was looking right there when he said that the gates of hell will not prevail against the church, pointing to what, pointing to where they would worship Pan. And interesting enough, Aleister Crowley, the, Satan, the father of Satanism, he had a hymn uh, to Pan that he had read at his funeral. And this also, I think it was this that birthed, interesting enough, and I want to finish on this note. Tony, how much time I got? One minute. One minute. I believe this episode is what um, instilled in me that we needed to cover the Kinsey syndrome mm. and then that we needed to cover Satan's sex scheme because it wasn't just Jeffrey Epstein. It was Satan. And J Jeffrey Epstein was just one of the pawns used I, I believe he was part of a big cabal, but that's for another yeah, episode, be, another day. Would, we learned that it was systemic across you know, all these elite people. And Joe's been covering this with Good Fight, and Tony's been yeah. around since 2004 when you guys did the Kinsey Syndrome. Yeah, I think that was so ahead of its time, the Kinsey Syndrome. I mean, it just revealed so much, and and it's it's come back around now because of what's been in the news. So yeah. the Kinsey Syndrome has gotten out there again so people can see you know, what the foundation, where this is all coming from, from Alfred Kinsey. And you think about this too, um, Pornhub. We just we covered Pornhub and the nat discussing things that they had going on, and even the liberals grabbed, even the liberals grabbed Nicholas Kristof from the New York Times wrote against Pornhub, and it was literally that same week after finally a liberal said something about the sex trafficking that was going on, on Pornhub that Visa and, and Mastercard said, okay, our money's not allowed to be used on Pornhub anymore. And Pornhub finally, after you went after their money, then finally said, okay, we'll stop letting these children be raped and us making money off it. So yeah, this is all part of it. Jeffrey Epstein, the devil and the cult. These are 10 through six. And on the next episode, we will be going through the top five of 2020. You've been listening to the Good Fight Radio Show brought to you by Good Fight Ministries. If you're blessed by this show and would like to partner with us, please consider visiting our Patreon page at patreon.com slash goodfight. 
Or you can write to us at P.O. Box 2202, Simi Valley, California, 93062. Or call us toll-free at 1-866-JC-TRUTH. That's 1-866-528-7884. We hope you'll tune in next time on the Good Fight Radio Show.